Want to turn $6 into over $10,000? We've got tips on Moss Event 61 and it's going down. Hello everybody, my name is Rob Gardner, AKA The Poker Pastor, and I stream on Twitch three days a week. On this channel, we strategize life on and off the poker felt. If you get any value from this video, click the like button below and drop us a comment. We love hearing your feedback. And as always, if you'll hit that subscribe button, you'll get notifications when our videos come out twice a week. So ACR's online super series is starting this February 9th with the mini online super series. It runs eight days for over 100 events, including this featured event we're talking about today, Moss event number 61, the multi-flight $6.60 50K guarantee. Now this tournament boasts 40 eight flights over eight days, six opportunities a day to play this tournament. And even if they only got a modest 200 people per flight, which I think is an incredibly low number, they would achieve over 9,600 entries and smash the guarantee. I think it is very possible that this tournament hits 12 to 15,000 entries or maybe even more, making it one of the largest $6 tournaments in the history of US online poker. This tournament does have a faster format. Each day one flight is gonna be 40 levels of six minutes each for a total of four hours of play which is going to make for a unique format combined with the multi-flight effort and so we wanted to take a little bit of time and discuss some strategy for this unique format to help you prepare for the best opportunity possible to turn your six dollars into a whole heck of a lot more so let's talk about three tips to help you make the moss 61 dream a reality tip number one increase your aggression now, in smaller field tournaments, playing a tight aggressive style can pay off. If you think of a tournament that has a field size of around 100 players, you need to get to roughly three to four times the starting stack in order to have a final table average stack. And it's pretty viable that if you're playing a tighter style and you're only playing premium hands, that during the course of a tournament, you can get three or four premium hands, get in the right cooler situations, maybe win a flip, and win a couple key hands in order to build that final table average stack and make the final table with a chance to win the tournament. However, when you start getting into larger fields and we start pushing fields of upwards of 10,000 people like the field we're talking about now, it's a completely different story. Now we're talking about anywhere from eight to 12 double ups, and this becomes a much more difficult task if you're only playing premium hands and waiting for premium cards. That coupled with the fact that this tournament has six minute blind levels, it's really gonna be impossible to play one of these tighter 11, eight, four styles, waiting for aces and kings and queens and jacks and ace kings and expect to go deep in the tournament because you're just not going to get those cards at a high enough frequency even if you sun run to build stacks that are going to stay ahead of the average stack eventually you're going to get cold decked you're going to have a cold string of cards and you're just not going to be able to keep up and you're going to fall out of the tournament as such, I recommend opening your range as much as possible while still being comfortable with your play and still playing a profitable style. For me, I've been trying to get my regular tournament stats up closer to 35, 25, 15. In other words, 35% of the time I'm voluntarily putting money in the pot, 25% of the time I'm raising preflop, and 15% of the time I'm three betting or re-raising preflop. Those are pretty aggressive stats compared to the average player. In this format, I may try and get closer closer to 40, 30, 15, where I'm really raising a wide range of hands and playing a wide range of hands to see as many flops as possible. The reason is simple. The more fold equity I can find, the more flops I can hit, the more pots I can win, and the better chance I have of overcoming a turbo structure and staying at a stack depth where I can take chances and be aggressive without getting to the point where I'm short stacked and playing shove or fold poker. Now, if you've not deviated from your style of play, this can be a pretty daunting task, and I wouldn't recommend that you make drastic changes. However, just try to find a few spots where you can open up a little bit. Maybe you play a few more suited hands or connected hands because those tend to play better post-flop. Maybe you play a few more pocket pairs than you're used to playing. Just try to find a few couple ways to creatively open up and give yourself a few more chances to win hands because those players that do play a lot of flops and do play more aggressive are gonna have the better chance at building those big stacks on day one that can take you deep into day two and give you a realistic shot at winning this tournament. Now, the second tip I have may not be proper English, but I don't care. 
attack the living daylights out of the day two bubble. Now, most players are already familiar with how players tighten up on the money bubble, but now we have the added impact of a day two bubble. And there is something psychological for a lot of poker players when they get to a, the end of a day one flight, they can't help themselves but tighten up and not want to risk bubbling day one. There's this feeling of, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to start all over again. I'm gonna have to start over at level one. I'm gonna have to re-enter a tournament and they just don't want that feeling. They also don't want to feel like that four hours was a total waste. It's different from a one day tournament for some reason. People get it in their heads that this is a horrible thing to bubble. It's a worse bubble than bubbling in the money and players just tighten up and they give up because they just want to make day two. This is the perfect time for you to pounce and strike. Not only is there going to be the added fold equity that you're going to be able to take advantage of when the rest of the field shuts down, but there's also an ICM consideration here. If you make it to day two with a substandard stack, say like five big blinds, and then you want to play future flights, you're really putting yourself in an ICM negative situation because if you do make it to day two a second time and say this time you get 15 big blinds, you have to completely forfeit that five big blind stack. And this is ultimately somewhat of an ICM mistake. Now because of the big prize pool, players who do have big bankrolls, some of them won't care about that ICM mistake because they have a big enough bankroll to offset that. And they know that the first place prize is going to be worth a ton of buy-ins and that kind of makes up for that but for the average player it's really not something you want to do and as such if you do have the bankroll to where you can play three four five six of these events you really really should be playing hyper aggressive on the day one bubble and trying to come into day two either with a really big stack say 20 big blinds or more that you can be comfortable playing into day two or busting versus bringing a five to 10 to six to eight, somewhere in their mediocre stack. Now, can you still win the tournament with a five big blind stack? Of course you can. And if you're a player that's maybe only playing one or two bullets in this tournament, then by all means, play to make day two, to make the money and to have any kind of shot possible moving forward. But for those that are realistically gonna take advantage of the multiple flights, you really should take the last 30 minutes or the last five levels of this tournament and play for a 20 big blind or bigger stack or bust. That's the strategy. I'm going to take into this and I feel like that's going to give me the best chance to head into day two with a stack that can realistically win the tournament. Now, if you mentally prepare for this ahead of time, it really shouldn't be that difficult. Just tell yourself up front, you know that those last 30 minutes, you're going to gamble. You're going to be willing to take flips. You're going to be willing to triple barrel bluff. You're going to put it all on the line because you know how valuable that 20 to 30 big blind stack can be heading into day two. The third and final tip I have for you today is going to feel a little contradictory to the first two, but it's be aware of the average stack in the tournament. Now in normal tournaments, we really don't get too enamored with the average stack. It's one of those numbers that people start to look at and then they start to get comfortable when they're ahead of the average stack or they look at it and they get panicked because they're below the average stack. When in reality, we should just be playing our optimal game until ICM becomes a critical component of what we're trying to do. But in turbo tournaments, it's a little bit different. And the reason it's a little bit different is because as that average stack starts to leak below 10 big blinds, stack utility starts to change. And where normally in a tournament, having say a five or six big blind stack would have little to no stack utility in a tournament where say the average stack was 20 big blinds and you'd be stuck in a spot where doubling up really wouldn't even get you to an average stack and you don't have much fold equity, in a turbo to compare, you can get in a spot where the average stack in the field is five or six big blinds and having a five or six big blind stack is actually perfectly comfortable. In fact, you'll see things in turbo tournaments you won't ever see in other tournaments, such as seeing players raise fold off of five or six or seven big blind stacks, seeing players limp off of five to six big blind stacks and folding. You'll see players who will raise pre-flop and then fold the flop. You'll get a lot more fold equity situations that you wouldn't get in normal tournaments. And this means that you have more options and tools at your disposal and more stack utility at lower depths. And so while we're gonna play a crazy aggressive style early and we're gonna play a crazy aggressive style on the day two bubble, we're gonna get deep into this tournament and there's gonna be a point where you're gonna to want to try and shut that aggression off and kind of more stay in tune with the field. Now, if you can sun run and stay at 15, 20, 25, 30 big blinds and keep your foot on the aggression pedal, 
ride that baby all the way to the finish line. But sooner or later for most people in this tournament, you are going to get down to the stack depth. The field is going to get down to that stack depth and just be aware of it. You don't have to panic and start shoving 12 and 13 bigs like you would in normal tournaments because you're in a spot where you still have a big percentage of the field covered and other people are starting to adapt to the lower stack depth and they're willing to make folds in spots that you normally wouldn't see it. This tournament is going to be one for the ages. I, for one, can't wait to play it. I plan on playing it as many times as I need to to bring at least 20 big blinds into day two. And again, the last level of day one is 6K, 12K when we're starting with a 10K stack. So you only have four hours to run 10K up to about 240K to accomplish that. It means we've got to be aggressive. We've got to keep our foot on the pedal. But I really believe we can do it. And I'm super excited about the possibility of this. $10,000 is a lot of money to make off of a $6 tournament. Who knows what the prize pool could get up to? Who knows what the first place prize pool will get up to? But again, be ready to be aggressive, be ready to hammer, be aware of the stack dynamics late, and you got a shot to be the champion of Moss Event 61. That's all I've got on this video. If you have further strategy questions, drop them in the comments. I'm super excited and ready to respond to them. Be happy to give you guys tips and advice heading up to the big day. Remember to get over to ACR and start playing these Moss events. Play the cycle and Saturdays to get in there. It all kicks off Sunday, February 9th. That's it for me, Poker Pastors. I say always, dream big and be bigger.